The Third Battle of Duran was fought from 1819 September 1918, with the Greeks and the British assaulting the positions of the Bulgarian First Army near Dodron Lake. The battle was part of World War I and took place in the Balkan theater. The battle ended with the Bulgarians repulsing all attacks. Prelude the Greeks and the British set off from their base at Thessaloniki at the same time as the Serbs and the French. The Greeks and the British, under the command of George Milne set off the attack on the Bulgarian positions at Dodrin while the Serbs and the French under the command of Franchette Desperi went to penetrate the Bulgarian defences in the Varda Valley. The Greeks and the British were aiming to capture the Bulgarian positions in the hills above Dodrin Lake. This was not the first time the Allies had attacked Dodron. In 1916, an Anglo-French attempt was repulsed by the 2nd Thracian Infantry Division. The British had twice failed to capture it in 1917. The fortifications were well built, the Bulgarians having spent the first months of 1916 and early 1917 strengthening the positions. The terrain around the area was rough, the fortifications being surrounded with three miles of scrub and rocks. Part of the defences were the dangerous Pier Bridge and the Grand Couronne. Battle. On the left flank, the British 12th Corps with the 22nd and 26th Divisions, reinforced by the Greeks' arrest division was to attack the difficult Pier Bridge. The British concentrated 231 pieces of artillery, including heavy 8-inch howitzers. The bombardment took place over two days, included gas shells and concluded with a rolling barrage, behind which the infantry was to advance. The British spent the time before the battle practicing for the assault. Facing them was the Bulgarian 9th Pleven Division with 122 guns, in very well-prepared defences, commanded by General Vladimir Vaziv. On September 18, the British 12th Corps attacked with the 66th and 67th Brigades of the 22nd Division and the Greeks' Arrest Division. The Bulgarian first line of trenches was overrun and the Arrest Division penetrated to the second line. The Bulgarians responded with heavy artillery fire and counter-attacks that recaptured the ground lost. Meanwhile the British 66th Brigade's 7th Battalion, South Wales Borders lost heavily and failed in its attacks. Attacks by the 11th Welsh Regiment and 9th Border Regiment did not go well either. The British 67th Brigade's 12th Cheshire Regiment followed by the 9th South Lancashire Regiment and 8th King's Shropshire Light Infantry advanced into Bulgarian artillery and machine gun fire. The 67th Brigade lost 65% of its soldiers. At the end of the day the 12th Corps was back at its starting point. On September 19, the 12th Corps attacked again but because the 16th Corps attacks north of the lake had failed, the 12th Corps would attack alone. The Greeks' arrest division repeated the previous day's performance, taking some Bulgarian trenches before being thrown back by heavy artillery, machine gun fire and counter-attacks. The British attacked with the 77th Brigade, the weakened 65th Brigade, and later the 2nd French Suavis. The 66th Brigades and 67th Brigades were fit only for defensive duties and did not participate. The 77th Brigade took some Bulgarian trenches but it was in an exposed position, being bombarded by artillery and eventually retreated before the Bulgarians counter-attacked. The brigade suffered about 50% casualties. The 65th Brigade's attack failed also, as did the French Suavis. Meanwhile, also on September 18, the British 16th Corps attacked with the Greek Cretan Division and the British 84th Brigade in support. They faced the Bulgarian 1st Macedonian Brigade with 24 guns and 64 machine guns. The Greek division attacked with two of its regiments up front and a third in reserve, supported on its flank by the 84th. Firing in support were six batteries of British artillery. The British 85th Brigade in reserve. At 500 the Greeks attacked, clearing out the Bulgarian outpost line. They then had to move across a long plain to attack the Bulgarian positions on a series of hills that overlooked the plain. 
The Greeks recklessly attacked across the plain, and penetrated the Bulgarian lines but were thrown back with heavy artillery, rifle, and machine gun fire. The British artillery deployed behind them to provide fire support. The Greeks rallied and made several more attacks on the Bulgarian lines with the same result as the first time. By the evening the Greeks withdrew followed a few hours later by the British artillery. The 16th Corps did not attack on 19 September due to casualties. The attack failed due to the lack of artillery support, problems with inter-unit communication and the reckless first attack by the Greeks. Casualties The Allies' losses totaled between 6,559 and 7,819 British and Greek soldiers, against 2,726 for the Bulgarians. Most of the British and Greek losses were to the 12th Corps and Sarest Division, with less than 1,000 coming from the 16th Corps and Cretan Division. Retreat Several days after the battle, the British realized the Bulgarian fortifications were quiet. The Greek and British armies advanced only to find the Bulgarian positions abandoned. The Serbs and French armies had defeated part of the Bulgarian army during the Battle of Dobropol in the Vardar Valley and were advancing towards Duran. This prompted the command of Army Group Skolts to order the Bulgarian First Army to retreat so that it would not be cut off from the rear. The British were weary and pursued slowly, and Bulgarian rear guards fought well enough to allow the rest of their troops to get away. The British Royal Air Force did attack the retreating Bulgarian columns inflicting some casualties. Aftermath The Allies continued to advance into Bulgarian-held territory and Sim said the Bulgarian army had mutinied and were threatening Sofia. On September 30, the Bulgarians surrendered to the Allies in Thessaloniki in order to avoid occupation. The British paid great honor to General Vladimir Vazov when in 1936 he arrived in Victoria Station in London. By lowering the flags of all their regiments who participated in the battle, the chairman of the British Legion Major Goldie said in his speech, he is one of the few foreign officers whose name features in our history.